Hey, this is Tommy Gunn from Cracked Rabbit Gaming, and this is an RPG Maker VX Ace tutorial for key items. Now, I've watched a bunch of, like, at least three videos on key items, and they were all wrong. So that's why I'm making this, to clear up what a key item actually does. Because a lot of people think you have to set keys as key items. So here, if we go into our items, um, you can see item type here and you can select normal or key item. Now, that's a misleading term to some people because it sounds like it's for keys, but by key, they just mean important item. So here's what it actually does. So all my, all my items are set to default right now. They're all normal. Um, so what people will use this, will wrongly use this for is for setting a key to open a door and they think you need to set it to key item. So here's what, I've got right now. She uh, is looking to see if you have a potion in your inventory, and if you do, she'll give you a magic water. And otherwise, she'll tell you you need to have a potion. So you can think of this as if this is like a door and a key. So if you have the key, you know, the actual physical key, then the door will open. You can do the same thing. So let's play this and see what happens. So right now I have nothing in my inventory and I am using uh, a different tile set and a couple scripts but they don't affect what we're doing right now. Um, if you have a potion, I'll give you an item. You need to have a potion. Go here. Now you can see in the bottom left we got some potions. So now I'm going to go back, talk to her, and boom, plus magic water. So again, you can think of that like a door and a key. Uh, if you have the key, the door will open. And as you can see, I did not have it set as a key item. So what does a key item do? Well, I will show you. So let's just go to full potion. Actually, we'll have to set a few of these. I'll do high potion and full potion set to key items. OK, so now those are set as key items. And what does that do? Well, pretty much nothing yet. I'll show you. Uh, it does one thing, and that is if you go into your inventory, I should probably get those potions first, go into my inventory now, you'll see I have items, and then over here, key items. That's the only difference. It put it in a different category, and everything else is the same. OK, so what's the point of that? Well, I'm going to do this other character, uh, give her select key item. So now uh, I'm going to do something that has nothing to do with doors or nothing to do with keys to make it really clear. So if you click select key item, it'll ask you for a variable. So I'm just going to do this and say key item one. You could use the same variable for every key item unless you want to remember the key items later on. Um, I'll explain that in a second. So right now I'll just do that. Um, so now. What that does is when you go and talk to her, I guess I can just do that now. We'll go talk to her and she's asking for a key item and you'll see that this box at the top popped up and there's nothing there because I have no items. Now I'll go back and now she's asking for key items. Of course, I normally you'd put that in the dialogue somewhere uh, perhaps. And so now she's asking for key items. And now you can see it's letting me select between the key items that I have. And they do nothing, because I did not add any scripting to that. So now let's have it actually do something. OK, so select key item, and we chose a variable. So what that's going to do is it's going to take the item that, you, that the user selects and put it on that variable. So now what we need to do is we have to look at our items. And so they're all numbered. And what do I want? So let's say she wants a full potion. So that's item number three. So you have to remember that. And we'll go and do a conditional branch and say if the variable key item is equal to three, because that's the one we want, that's our item, uh, then something happens. So she, well, so here, we can say, give me a full potion. 
And then if you do it, then she'll give you whatever, 99. And typically you would also change the items and get take the full potion out of the player's inventory. So she's giving you 99 gold and taking the potion if you have it and if you select it correctly. Otherwise, and anything else, if you select any other key item or if you cancel, uh, then she can just say, that's not what I want. Okay, so let's try that and see if that works. New game, got to remember to get my items. Hi Tommy, give me a full potion. I'll say, I'll give you a high potion. That's not what I want. Okay, let's try again. Full potion. And you can see, full potion is removed from my inventory. 99 gold is added. You can see my gold at the bottom left. When I started with 1,000, so now I have 1,099. And that's it. That's what key items do. And remember, it's also over here, so you can see what key items you have. There are also some scripts you can get that will allow you to have multiple categories of key items. So, for instance, say in your game you are collecting flowers throughout your whole game and you have roses and tulips and things like that. Uh, you could have a whole category of flowers for key items and then someone could ask you for a flower and you could select just from flowers but then you could also have a category for something else in the same game and someone else could ask you for a key item from just that category. Otherwise, all your key items are lumped together. And so if you have a lot of them, for whatever reason, that could get unwieldy. Um, I wanted to show one other thing you can do with, um, with this. And instead of setting the else condition, let's just say, um, you give item 3, which is the full potion, uh, she'll give you 99 gold for it, but what if you give her uh, number 2, which was the high potion, then you could set this to give you uh, 33 gold, and again, you want to take away the high potion that you give her. Um, so this way you can have multiple, you can be looking for multiple items, not just one. So let's try this and see what happens. Should work. So now I can give a high potion and there, plus 33. You'll have to ignore that the other stuff that it was showing. So now I have two high potions left and one full potion, and if I give the full potion, then 99. So that works correctly, and of course we have this set, so you can do it an unlimited number of times if you keep getting potions. You, of course you can use a self-switch, so as soon as you give any item, you'll hit self-switch set to A, and then it'll go to the next page, and then you won't be able to give any more items if you want one character to only allow you to give one item. And another thing you could do um, with multiple variables or just dedicated variables for key items is say you have a dating game or something, uh, you could have a character ask for a gift or something stupid like that, whatever. Uh, and so say you have roses, so let's say the flower game, you can give roses or tulips or something else, then she'll remember which item you gave her. And because it's set to that variable, and of course you could set that to another variable uh, if you still just want to have one variable as a key item. Um, so that later on, if you talk to her again, she'll say thanks for the roses, you know, every time you talk to her, or thanks for the tulips. Or even at the end of the game, uh, you'll get a different ending depending on what gift you gave the person, or something like that. Just a dumb example. Uh, plenty of things you can do with this and I hope that helped clear it up a little bit. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and comment, although you should also just check out any of the RPG Maker forums because there are lots of helpful people there and you'll probably get a better answer.